Okay. Uh, this is for the hedge fund audience monitoring whatever we talked about in the past couple of days. Okay. I'm switching hats. Bam. Go. Kick us off. Um, so there's quite a few cases that we've seen within the larger umbrella of finance that SkyFi could be uh, used for specifically like real time monitoring. How much of an edge does SkyFi specifically relating to like the imagery or the data and analytics um, really give you compared to the traditional resources of, of information that hedge funds would typically get, like Bloomberg Terminal or Dark Pool Secrets, any, anything like that? Well, so let's take a step back. Like trading is basically value add on top of information. So when you say, what type of edge do I get? The edge is infinite, right? Because I have actionable intelligence on top of the information I get. If I don't have the earth observation data or that piece of information, I have nothing to act on, right? I have to use the traditional things, but I get new insights, new ideas, um, more confidence, et cetera, on existing things that I may have a bet on, but I might find something or see something that creates a new idea, a new, a new trade, a new investment, a new way of thinking that comes from earth observation. So, you know, in some respects, it's, some percentage greater, multiple 200, 300, 400, 500. And then in some respects, it's infinite because I'm getting access to information I was unaware of. Mm -hmm. I like how you hit on the, the aspect of, of the newness of it. Um, regarding, I guess, the newness and then just side note too. So we're, we're really trying to hit like a FOMO angle with a lot right. of the application and the use case of this. Um, where do you see the like, the next five years, I guess, of hedge fund mentality for folks that are overlooking this type of data in today's market. Yeah. So let me give you an example that I would use satellite data for. I count every single rig and frack crew in, in North America. It's ground truth. I know more about frack crews than the oil companies that are hiring the operators, where they are, where they aren't. Okay. So I'm not guessing. I'm not modeling. I'm knowing. So our big thing in our desk is why guess when you can know? Right, And that's why we started purchasing satellite data to track these frack, frack crews, because we want to know. We don't want to guess. We don't want to correlate. We want to sample. We want to know exactly where they are, where they're drilling, when they move, how long they've been there, because we're able to get a lot of information about future production based on that. So that's one example. I'm supposed in other fields, ags, commodities, you want to know if the crop is ruined? You know. You have a hyperspectral picture. You want to know if there's worms in the corner of the crop field or some sort of infestation? You're not guessing. It's not a rumor. You know. You see it. You directly observe it. So that's where we're going to be, and that's where everybody is going to need to be because you don't want to be in the guessing crowd. You want to be in the knowing crowd. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Okay, moving forward. Um, coming back more towards... Not necessarily SkyFi, but I want to talk about just hedge funds uh, for a quick sec. Um, top priorities and or problems that hedge funds are facing in today's market. Um, if you want to relate this back to your like personal experience with, with uh, Skyler, that's fine. But I guess what would you say top three to five priorities of hedge funds um, with regards to the way that they're getting data now? And then how does SkyFi solve that problem? Yeah, so I think so, like whether it's like sector or invest type of investment vehicles, anything like that, and then we can pull it back to SkyFi. So as I said before, trading is all about value add on top of information, right? And a lot of us are getting the best of information available that we can get in order to, to do analysis and then actionable, turn that into actionable intel intelligence, right? I can make a decision, buy this, sell that, not buy this, add to my position, reduce my position. In a lot of areas, sometimes you have to make a good guess. You have to make, oh, well, it's correlated to this, or this may have happened, or this, this piece of equipment may be damaged, or these crops may be ruined, right? Or, or this tanker may be stuck here for seven days or one day in the Suez Canal, right? And you, you just have to guess because you don't have direct observation or, or, or any ability to do that. What SkyFi does or access to Earth observation data does is no more guessing. You absolutely know. And with that, you have the confidence to act quickly um, and, and extract value out of the situation, reduce your risk or increase your risk, depending on what's going on. Okay. Love it. Great answer. Um, 
I know a little bit about your backstory of of tracking rigs and kind of I think it was a play on natural gas and that was kind of right. the origination of of SkyFi. Would you be, of course, if you're comfortable with this, kind of walking us through your mindset in in the process of in as much detail as possible of, of what that was like of I was able to dissect this imagery, analyze X, Y, Z specific, and then able to make investments, you know, whether it's shorting company, ABC or whatever. I right. want to see the, uh, I would like to hear kind of the the play-by-play exactly on okay. the, the application aspect of it. So in Skylar, the motto is why guess when you can know. Um, and one of the things that I was very upset about is that we were guessing what rigs were. You know, the Baker Hughes rig count is a guess. It's a sample um, and then they kind of guess what everybody else is doing. And, I, and you know, I came to my analyst at the time, Eric, and I was like, don't we have satellites running around the sky? Aren't there, you know, aren't there a bunch of satellites? Like, why can't we just count them? Why can't we just write an algo to do optical recognition and count the rigs? Like, why are we guessing this in frac crews? So they went out, bought a bunch of satellite data, went through the painful, painful process of negotiating with a satellite operator, bought a metric F ton of satellite data, <laughs> And started to analyze it, and we weren't guessing anymore. We knew where the frac crews were. We knew where the where the rigs were, and we had actual intelligence and a better idea of what production was going to do forward. But also, we had an idea of the people who are guessing, and the whole market is following the Baker Hughes rig count, right? Which is a guess. We're not guessing. We know, and eventually they're going to reconcile to what we have. Recently, it just reconciled to what we have, and the market had a big move. So there was an information arbitrage in itself, not just the fundamentals of uh, supply and demand of natural gas, but the supply and demand of information we were able to trade off of or establish a position on, right? That's, that's just in my realm, right? I'm sure there's other things out there where people are guessing or wondering how many tankers are moving in or how much dark oil is moving across the ocean or whatever it is they're when this factory is turning on, is this factory running in China? Is it not running in China? Um, you know, are exports going, et cetera? There's many, many questions that Earth observation data will give you the answer to, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not guessing. I'm looking at your factory with synthetic aperture radar. I can see inside your building. I know when your fans are spinning. I can take a hyperspectral image of your building. I can see what off gases are coming. I can see the exhaust of your factory. I can know a lot of things about a object place um, or anything on earth. And so these things are amazing. Um, and different people will use them in different ways. You know, there's a company out there that measures moisture with Elba and SAR, does the analytics for you and tells you how much moisture is on there. Well, this, this is gonna sink into the ocean. This is a pothole, this dam is gonna break, that type of thing. Um, that's valuable to cities and governments, et cetera. Um, for me, I'm in finance, hedge funds. I, I want to know if the thing's going to break, if it's going to put back together, if uh, what's going to happen in my world. My world is natural gas and power. So everything I can know about the fundamentals, supply and demand of natural gas, it's my job for my investors to do my best. And doing my best means use all the resources available to me to know what's going on. So that's why I use satellite imagery. Love it. There's so much meat on the bone here. Um, I had a couple questions throughout, but I didn't want to interrupt you, and I regret it now because now I've lost my train of thought. Lost the um, <laughs> all good. No, 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 I appreciate the answer anyway. One thing that stuck out, um, it sounds like I was, I was watching an article that Tom had sent over too. So when you're getting this real-time data and you're able to know and not guess, alongside mass media and headlines and all the news that comes of, of the, the public sector, would it be safe to say that there's like contrarian opportunities that publicize themselves because of the analytics and the imagery that you guys are able to see? In other words, like, are you seeing opportunities that the general public of and institutions or investment uh, hedge funds aren't seeing because they don't have access to that? Data? Yeah, I mean, for one is, you know, we look at like people's estimates of rig counts and we laugh, right? Because we know, we have a picture. If we, if we know the frac crews, right? Like we know, we know what's going on. We know where they move, et cetera. I suppose in, other areas and other industries, there will be a situation where what I call is information arbitrage. People believe this to be true, and it's a reasonable guess, you know, it's, but it's, it's kind of different when you actually have the answer, right? And sometimes 
people's beliefs versus what's ground truth may be different. It may be wildly different. How many times that may pop up over the course of a year is probably like commodity specific, stock specific, company specific, but it does happen because people have to guess because they don't have access to the data or they're not buying the data, right? When you have earth observation data, the amount of guessing goes way down, down to zero in some cases, right? So there's always going to be those situations. It's not like a regular cadence, but what happens is, is that one trade, one wild divergence, one opportunity pays for your whole hedge fund for the year. I love it. Okay, perfect. All right, I only have uh, two more questions for you. Um, kind of backing out of the hedge fund, kind of more so just high level SkyFi. Um, walk me through your process of when you're coining this uh, easifying space. We've seen it in a lot of our media, Tom and Luke have talked about it in a bunch. Um, walk me through the process of like, creating that like what was going through your head when when you were thinking i don't want to democratize space i want to easify space what, what was the justification for using that word i guess specifically and a little bit of the like reasoning or creativity behind it at the time yeah so um to step back on why is it easify right so there's a in the concept called be behavior design the behavior is a convergence of motivation ability and a prompt okay prompt is just an alarm or a reminder call grandma or an alarm that goes off, call grandma. Internal prompts are not valuable, so there's prompt design. Then there's all the motivational speakers, right? Like you, you gotta get your motivation up or whatever, but your motivation goes up and down. The thing that tech companies focus on is making things easier, right? And so when you look at the great tech companies, their revenues are correlated with how easy they make an action, right? Everybody could have hailed a taxi or called a, 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 a driver, but Uber makes it easy. Just pick up your phone, click, it's there. Everybody knew how to buy a CD or a book or go to a bookstore. Amazon just made it easy, okay? Buying satellite imagery was so difficult and so painful, okay? Even though it was commercially available, it was extremely hard. So hard that a person of means, if I challenge them that, hey, you're going to die unless you get a satellite image within three days, would, would most likely die, right? Like, even if they had the money. And so... My idea was that if I made it easy for people to have access to this information, they would be able to take this information and have an impact on the world, whether that be for finance or trading or whether that be, you know, um, environmental things, um, uh, ocean monitoring, global warming, safety, fire and rescue, all the massive use cases you have for earth observation data, it just was so painful to go get it that people weren't using it and doing wonderful things with our planet. And so the first step is to make it easy, make it very, very easy, easification. So the easier something is, the more likely it's that to happen. People live in the land of frustration when it comes to Earth observation data, satellite imagery, right? They were just frustrated, like, oh, it would be, it would really like to know this. And I know there's satellite companies out there, but I got to go through a sales channel. I got to talk to a guy and he wants me to buy like 100,000 bananas, but I only need two bananas, right? <laughs> and, and then, you know, you had to talk to somebody, you had to pick up the phone. And I was like, look, you can order everything from your phone. You can buy a car from your phone. You can have your groceries delivered, doctors on demand, everything. Every single technology company allows you to order from your phone or order from your computer. And so what I felt is that the impacts of earth observation data were being stunted by the acquisition process. And so I took it upon myself out of frustration, trying to get the data myself and going through that process to make it easy for everyone. And so I create value for my LPs by trading on the data and earth observation data. Other people will create value for the planet by having access, easy access to earth observation data. I love it. I love it. Okay. Chris, you got some good juicy stuff here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, cool. And then I the last one? Up? Yeah, yeah. Rip it, rip it. I hate to go back to the financial space, but um, if you could run me through like what sensors or product types that SkyFi offers that would appeal to someone most in those sectors, just giving you kind of like the opportunity to boast how SkyFi differs from competitors, whether that be like number of satellites or uh, anything in that realm. Yeah. Sorry. So 
for sky fi earth observation we have planes i don't know how many planes but we have a plane provider we have balloons um and we, of course we have satellites in earth observation data right now and and as long as it's earth observation data we'll and we'll bring them on platform and make it easy for everybody to get um so the sensors i use are synthetic aperture radar hyperspectral and of course optical things that you can see with your eyes right and there's also near infrared and then there's also nighttime video um all of these are tools to get information you need. Now, when I say synthetic aperture radar, most people go, their heads will spin. But imagine being able to look through a building, look through clouds, uh, determine if a, a propeller is spinning, all from a picture, right? All from the information in that data. Hyperspectral, what I call the truth, is the ability to chemically fingerprint every single pixel. Every single pixel. So... Is this factory running and putting out this gas? Yes. Is this is this is this a uh, is that a uh, tarp or a canopy or is that the forest? Can't hide from hyperspectral, right? Is 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 it what paint did that is that car coated with? Is it from this factory or that factory? That's the ability of hyperspectral, right? And so I would say that I'm not bright enough to think of all the use cases. Right, there's just infinite use cases, right? But what we have is the tools to identify everything within the resolutions that we offer across the globe, many different ways. And so for me, um, most of it's optical and the computer reads the optical and tells me where rigs are and factories are. And it'll tell me if the factory is running or not running. These are kind of the sledgehammer things that I need to know or whether or not this ship is bunkering and sending illegal sanctions violated crude oil to China, right? Using a combination of optical and eight band, eight resolution, op, eight band resolution optical, hyperspectral and, and, and synthetic, synthetic aperture radar tracking these vessels. So all of them are available to you. We have every, if there's a sensor in the sky, we have it. Nice. Okay. Chris, you got any more? I got um, one final one. I mean, back to where Tom was going is just what does the future look like for SkyFi? What does the look, future look for SkyFi? So the first step of SkyFi is to easify and get everyone access to Earth observation data, whether that's optical, hyperspectral, synthetic aperture radar, daytime video, nighttime video, near infrared, whatever sensor there is, is to make it available to people. But people don't want sensors, right? They want answers. And the next thing for SkyFi to do is, of course, add more sensors, more reduce the latency, increase the frequency, more and more and more sensors, but to have the application layer, if you will, an app store, right? If I hand you your phone, your phone is pretty useless without the applications on it. You don't care that there's 8.8 .8 megahertz, a serial bus, a GPS chip. You want an app that gets you to where you're going. You want, you know, you want doctors on demand. You want to be able to share pictures easily. You want to be able to answer email. Those applications unlock the value of the phone. So in the same way, SkyFi is going to have a platform to provide the analytics and the answers people are seeking. People want to know, is the factory running or not? Is crude oil moving? Is this factory polluting the ocean? Is there nitrogen in the water? Are the walruses being decimated? All kinds of answers that they want that they can get from Earth observation data analyzed properly. And so there's tons of partners out there, very smart people who will have their programs on the SkyFi platform getting them those answers. That's great. That's exactly what I was looking for. Solid. <clears throat> Tom, is there anything else? I guess you've had the most visibility into campaigns and kind of the angles that we've been wanting to hit with this new finance sector. Anything else yeah. that we skipped over you think people are talking like about? A, I have a dumb question that I'm looking for a smart answer for, but uh, how many images does someone need to buy? Like, does this, can, are we, are we only talking hedge funds or if I'm like a financial nerd crypto bust kid that's now looking for my next wave is, is satellite imagery right for me to, to try to trade on that? I, I don't, it depends on, I mean, there's 
People trade everything. People trade corrugated cardboard boxes. I didn't even know there was a market for that, right? There's a tomato paste market. I didn't know there was a tomato paste market, right? So I don't know. I mean, you're like, holy shit, the tomato crop in Northern California is pretty decimated based on my optical observations of X, Y, and Z. And you go get long tomato paste futures. I, I don't know. Like, so when you think about like, can the individual extract value out of this information? The answer is unequivocally yes. But do I know how every, and in every single case, the answer is absolutely not. You know, it's kind of like, what are the, you know, the internet is the exchange of information, right? And, and, and the e easification of, of getting information and disseminating information. So we're easifying access to another type of information, earth observation data. No one, you know, it's kind of cute to watch these old videos. Well, what do you think will happen and how will we use the internet? And they're like, uh, check sports scores and, and, and read the news, right? Like true, but myopic, right? Very small. So for me, you know, if, if I try and give you one of those answers right now and somebody plays this video 10 years from now, I'm like, damn, he didn't know a damn thing. I use it for this, 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 right? Because no one is smart enough to think of all the use cases to provide value on top of data, right? We're getting exposed to our world from a vantage point and getting information that we've never had access to and we're giving it to everyone and the geniuses of the world are going to tell you whether or not we can, I don't know, trade crypto NFTs off of it or not. I don't know. Okay, it's good. By the way, I'm not endorsing uh, crypto trading, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, I know you're busy, Bill, so that wraps it up for questions on my end. Chris, Tom, unless you guys have anything else, this is super awesome. Very, very, very insightful. I think we have a ton to work with in terms of marketing materials, angles, even past the hedge fund stuff. Uh, okay. We're focused on agriculture and construction right now too, and I think some of the some of this recording will be really helpful for those campaigns as well. Yeah, we had a guy who was like, "Yeah, I just need to know. I have to drive." It was like, "Yeah, I have guys that have to drive like five hours up into Texas and then five hours back to check if a piece of equipment that is yay big." And I was like, "You better off just image. It, better off taking the SAR image real quick and just you know we did the simple math. I was like, "You got to pay the guy. He's got gas. He's got to go back and forth. Take a SAR image and just tell you it's there." You know, perfect. Example. You never know. You never know. <laughs> exactly. Cool. All righty. Uh, okay. Chris, Tom, I'm good. Unless you guys have anything else. Oh, okay. good. Thanks so much for the time. Got it. Anytime, cool. guys. Peace. Appreciate you guys. We'll catch you soon. All right, bye.